Hi everybody, welcome to Peacefield Farm Channel. I'm going to be making some beer today from scratch. This is a uh, coconut porter, a real nice beer for the holidays, and I'm starting it today, which is November 15, and then it'll be ready by Christmas time. First step, I've already collected about two and a half gallons of water in my brew kettle here. I've already put in I've already put the grain bag in. There's a lot of grains involved with this one, so there's actually two grain bags. This is the other grain bag right here. It's essentially just a tea bag. And I'm holding the tea bag onto the side of the uh, brew kettle here with a clothespin. The two grain bags are now in the brew pot. Grains steeping into the uh, into the brew kettle. My source of heat is propane. Here's my propane can right there. Now I just have to bring it to a boil. This particular recipe calls for three different kinds of hops. U.S. Goldings, Williamette, and U.K. Challenger. These hops will be added at various times during the boil. In addition to the hops, it's handy to have some hot pads for when you need to take the kettle off of the burner. I also have here a tool, a, a handheld thermometer, infrared thermometer, which is very handy also uh, to know when to do certain steps. For example, these these grain bags need to come out when the temperature of the contents of the brew kettle reach 170 degrees. Grain bags come out. I'm going to do a temperature reading right now. As you can see, it's 86 degrees right now. We've been heating for about five minutes. As you can see here, the contents of the brew kettle are just starting to uh, get some water vapor coming off the top of it. I'm going to check the temperature in a little bit. Also, you may note that I built a windscreen behind, you can see it behind the brew kettle. Uh, it just makes the, the whole process a little more efficient. The contents of the brew kettle are getting pretty dark. I'm going to give her a stir here. We don't want any uh, Scorching on the bottom of the kettle just makes it hard to clean up afterwards. So we'll just give her a stir here and then we're going to check the temperature. 141, 138. Okay, that's good. At 170, we're going to take those tea bags out of there. Temperature is 164. So it won't be too long before I remove the grain bags from the uh, boiling contents of the brew kettle. We've reached a boil, so now it's time to stir in 3.15 pounds of gold malt extract syrup. I've turned off the heat. As you can see, this stuff is really thick, this malt syrup. Mixes in really well with the uh, with the boiling hot worked. Now that we've added the malt syrup to it, we can call it worked instead of water. Worked is spelled W-O-R-T, and that's what brewers call what turns into beer. Is I've cut the tops off of those two containers of the malt extract syrup, and I have a little tiny spatula here. I'm going to use to Trying to get as much of this out of here as I can. Because this is what makes your beer. I'm going to do something else here that some brewers might disagree with a little bit, but I'm going to put some of the hot wort in there to help. Uh, this stuff is really thick, but when it's hot, it moves pretty freely. This is kind of a sticky job, too, because the syrup, not only is it thick, it's very sticky. 
It's very sweet. If you were to taste it right now, it's very sweet. But that's where the sugars come from that get fermented into alcohol. So the more sugars, malt sugars, and other kinds of sugars, too, that you have in your beer, the higher the alcohol content is going to turn up. Uh, alcohol content. I've added the malt syrup, both containers of malt syrup, 6.2 pounds of malt syrup here and there right now. Now I'm going to bring this back to a boil. Timer's on. Whoa! She almost boiled over there. Not quite though. It's also known as the dreaded boil over. And it's dreaded because it makes a big mess. And you also lose some of your stuff. So I'm going to put the first edition of hops in here right now too. One ounce of UK Challenger. That tends to uh, make the hot break even more foamy. So we'll see if she's under control or not yet. It's real important to always be stirring this. If you look at that, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's kind of green from the hops. But the foam has gone down. I'm going to lower the heat a little more. I just need enough. I just need enough heat on there to keep it boiling. You can pour more heat into it. All that will do is boil it faster. The temperature remains the same. So it does not need a blast of heat. Once it starts boiling, you just need to maintain the boil. And if you maintain that boil, then you know you're at the right temperature. As you can see now, it's not foaming up nearly as much. So we're done with the hot break. We've done one edition of hops. The next hop edition is at, is at 15 minutes. Uh, the timer's counting down now. It's probably at about 50 minutes. So we need to do a hop edition, and we also need to do a, a dried malt powder edition at that time, too. As you can see, everything's going along real well here. The whole process of uh, making beer takes about an hour for the boil altogether. And then we have to cool it down, then we have to put the yeast in, but I'll take you through all those steps. But really the whole process takes about a month from the time you get to, I mean, I'm sorry, from the time you start until the time you can actually start drinking your beer. So this should be ready, um, you know, about mid-December should be just perfect. As you get to see, things are percolating along pretty well here. In about a minute and a half, we need to do an addition We'll be adding two ingredients. The first one, Breeze Golden Light, which is a malt powder. And the second one is a soft candy sugar. Those are added at 15 minutes, and then there will be a hop addition at 10 minutes and another hop addition at five minutes. So these times I'm talking about are counted down from 60 minutes. There's plenty of stuff to do while we're waiting uh, or watching the wort to boil as well. I mean, there's uh, uh, we have to sanitize things. There's the, the bucket, the fermentation bucket needs to be sanitized. And I have a, uh, a strainer that I sanitize, an airlock that I sanitize. But I'll show you all those things later. But that's what I was doing while this was boiling. Whenever you do an addition, you have to be careful that the hot break and the boil over doesn't happen. I added those uh, the malt powder and the candy sugar and a hot break uh, did occur again. I caught it in time, it hasn't boiled over, but it has not settled down yet either. So I'm gonna have to repeat this process a few more times so I don't have it, uh, so I don't have a boil over. It's kind of a crapshoot, you gotta, Take it off before it comes up, but yet you want to leave it on the heat as long as possible, too, to get that hot break to be done, because at 10 minutes, I have to have a hop addition. And sometimes you get a, another break after the hop addition, too. But this was a lot of sugar added at once here, a couple pounds. We've got about two minutes before the end of the boil. The hot break, the last hot break from the uh, uh, last two editions I made at 15 minutes, took almost the whole 15 minutes to go down. 
then I added a, uh, a hop addition at 10 minutes and another hop addition at 5 minutes. But uh, we're just about ready to take her out to the chiller and chill this thing down. The purpose of the chiller is to reduce the temperature. You know, right now this is boiling, which is about 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we want to reduce the temperature of the wort here down to about 100 degrees as quickly as possible. So in order to do that, we use a device called a chiller. And I will show you that in a little bit here. I just removed the wort from the hot plate, the propane powered hot plate. This is a chiller. And this is our yard hydrant here. I have the chiller attached to the yard hydrant. Hydrant. This is just a coil of copper that I made a long, long time ago, wrapped it around a five gallon bucket. And this is what I use to co cool down the wort. So I'm just gonna set that in there with the spoon. I'm gonna turn the water on and hopefully try not to squirt myself with it. Maybe I'll put it right under there. the water on at my temperature meter here thermometer right now I'm getting 171 degrees and of course the temperature of the incoming water here is about 4550 so I'm going to stir this and ma maintain it or not maintain monitor the temperature Yep, going in is quite cold, coming out is quite warm out of the coil. So really you could call this uh, chiller a heat exchanger because that's exactly what it does. You just run a cold water through it. The cold water runs through the coils, the copper coils. The copper is a really good conductor of heat. So it takes the heat out of the wort and uh, puts it into the water that's running inside the coals. And then that water Flows out onto the ground and it's hot. So we're down to 145 right now. Let's drop 20 degrees already. At the same time, I'm uh, stirring this rather aggressively because the wort is supposed to be aerated before you uh, start the fermentation, before you add the yeast to it. So I'm aerating it as much as I can at the same time cooling off. So once this gets down to about 100 degrees or so, it's down to 125 now. Once this gets down to 100 degrees or so, I'm gonna take it in the house. I'm gonna put it in the fermentation bucket. I'm gonna add water back up to five gallons because this is a five gallon batch. Then I'm gonna add the yeast. And then I'm gonna close it up, put the fermentation lock on top. And then by tomorrow, it should be fermenting if everything goes right. Down to 107, so we're gonna shut this off and move our business inside.